First of all, I appreciate everybody uh, fighting the interesting weather and, and coming out. A um, couple things, uh, reviewing the Michigan State game. You know, first of all, obviously a bunch of unique situations. I've been doing this for 23 years and have never had uh, a weather delay at all, um, let alone three plus hours or whatever it may be. Uh, first of all, got to give Michigan State and, and Coach D'Antonio a bunch of credit. Um, I do want to address kind of the issue at the end of the game uh, with me running off. I just happened to look to my right after the field goal went through and saw a number of players or a couple players running off the field. Uh, Koa Farmer is one of the best kids uh, that we have in our program. And there was, there, was, there was probably three or four kids that were doing it, and he happened to be one of them. Um, Koa came in and talked to me. Uh, um, got great family. is an unbelievable kid. I don't want anybody to think... Um, that Koa is not one of the best kids that we have in our program. He really is. Um, you know, but I think you know, we had a few guys that were probably handling the situation different than, than, than we would like. So uh, that got caught on video. Uh, but I want to make sure that everybody understands Koa Farmer is an awesome, awesome young man. Uh, and we met on Sunday um, about that. He reached out to me. He wanted to come and meet with me about it. And, He's just a very conscientious, thoughtful, good kid. Um, so I want to make sure everybody understands that. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you know we have we have got to be able to be more consistent uh, offensively. I think that the the biggest factor in that game was the turnovers. Uh, it's hard to win you know, when you turn the ball over three times on the road against a good opponent. You're going to have a hard time being successful. Uh, we got to find a way to get uh, the quarterback uh, pressured. On uh, defense, we haven't done a great job of that here recently. Uh, that's a really good quarterback we faced. Uh, but I think that was a, a major factor in the game. We weren't able to get pressure on their quarterback. Um, you know, and then, and then special teams, we just haven't been as clean the last couple of weeks uh, as we've been. On a positive note, one of the areas that I thought you know, we've been struggling this year on defense was sudden change. And I thought our defense handled the three turnovers extremely well. Um, those three turnovers you know, uh, came out to be two punts and one takeaway. So you know, that was a real positive. We want to build on that. Uh, but we got to get a running game going on offense. Uh, we got to get off the field on third down. And then on special teams, we got to just be a little bit more consistent with, with everything we're doing. So uh, that is our, our Michigan State review. Um, get on to uh, our opponent this week in Rutgers. And Coach Ash, who's, who's doing a nice job, um, you know, um, obviously they're, they're coming to our place. Uh, Going to be, you know, some challenges with that, with it, you know, balancing homecoming, uh, military appreciation day, which is always a great opportunity for us to, to make sure that the people that serve our country know how much we appreciate them. And Penn State does an unbelievable job with that. Um, you know, obviously, offensively, they're pro style offense that mixes some spread concepts and RPO concepts in there a little bit. Um, got a lot of respect for Jerry Kill, you know, Matt Lyme Grover, Jerry, Jerry were together for 17 years. Got a lot of respect for him. Uh, defensively they've moved to an odd front defense which is which is different. Uh, we don't see that very often. It changes how you have to game plan. It changes your blocking schemes in the running game. It changes your block blocking schemes in, in the passing game from a protection standpoint. And then on special teams, Janari and Grant is always an issue and always a concern. So uh, yeah, we need to be ready for that. But I do feel I feel good about the opportunity. Obviously I'll have a better idea after today, uh, with uh, today being our first true, really game plan practice for them. So, open up the questions. Start with Rich Garcella from the Ready Eagle. Good afternoon, James. Hey, Rich. James, you said after the game Saturday, we're going to become more of a hard nosed team up front, we're going to be more physical. How do you go about changing a team's personality or identity three quarters of the way through the season? Yeah, it's not going to happen overnight. We got we got to keep stressing it. We got to keep stressing it on, on both sides of the ball. We've had some injuries that have factored into that as well. But um, you know, we we need to we need to be able to create space um, on offense, and, and we need to be more physical and and uh, you know strike our keys and and win our one on one matchups uh, defensively. So. Uh, it's not something that's going to change overnight. Uh, we have done some really, really good things this year, but we need to do it more consistently, and we need to do it in, 
in every circumstance, uh, at home, on the road, ranked opponent, non-ranked opponent, conference game, non-conference game. We just need to be more consistent with everything we do. Bob Flanders, Harrisburg Patriot News. Hello, James. How are you doing? Good, Bob. How are you? I'm good. James, I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on the defensive end play. Again, Michigan State, you didn't have Ryan Buckle. Obviously, you lost Florence Brown, and you moved Kevin Gibbons to the end. But how do you think he did? How do you think he moved it? Yeah, I think, yeah, obviously, whenever you lose, you know, two, you know, starters uh, at one position, you know, that, that's a challenge. You lose Torrance Brown early in the year, and now you lose Buckholtz. Um, you know, that, that's a challenge for, for us to, for me to sit here and say that we don't miss those guys and we didn't miss those guys on Saturday, you know, would not be truthful. Um, you know, hopefully we got a chance to get Buck back here sooner rather than later. Um, I think Kevin Gibbons does some, some really good things and brings some real value there, but obviously uh, he doesn't have nearly um, the accumulated reps at defensive end that he does at defensive tackle. So, um, you know, the more experience he gains there and then the more we're able to develop some of the younger guys, that, that'll be helpful because uh, we are missing those two guys right now. There's, there's no doubt about that. Derek LaVar, Spokes Bear Times leader. Hi, James. How are you? Good, Derek. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, sort of piggybacking off uh, Rich's question about uh, becoming more hard nosed up front, how do you go about making that change? How much of it is mentality and how much of it is scheme and play calling, do you think? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's all those things. It's, it's a combination of, of how we practice, it's a combination of, of uh, uh, mentality, it, it, it's a combination of uh, development, it's a combination of recruiting, it's a combination of scheme. It, it's, it's all those things. Um, you know that's 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 a challenge, especially when you when you face really good fronts. And um, you know I think it's created some opportunities for us as well. I mean Trace has has thrown for a bunch of yards, um, and that's a big part of that because people are so invested of in over in over uh, loading the box. And that formula has been pretty good to us. You know when we don't turn the ball over, but obviously when you're having a hard time running the ball and you're throwing for a bunch of yards and those things are you know, creating great matchups on the perimeter and great throwing situations and you win, then, then, then you, know, you, 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 you can live with it. But you still need to improve in some of those areas. But when you, when you turn the ball over, um, then that's, then that's ob obviously where you have some real challenges. So uh, we want to become more balanced um, as much as we possibly can. But it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be uh, you know, uh, you know, just a constant uh, growth uh, each week, each day, you know, each practice as the season goes on. Mark Wilgenrich, Alan Morning Call. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mark. How did the players respond to your message that you said not after the game and I'm assuming you said that after the game, but returning to the formula that you said you know worked? Yeah, I, you know, all, all the feedback that I got from, from coaches, from players, from administration, um, they felt like my message after the game was, was, was good. Um, you know, looking at the guy's body language and things like that, it, it seemed like it was received well. Um, you know, I think, I think last year we, we started to have some conversations that, that we hadn't had in the past. And this year we had a little bit of conversations that we haven't had in the past. And it kind of opened that door. And once that door was open, we started to have a little bit more of those conversations. And um, you know, I'm just a huge believer, you take care of today, um, um, that, that will take care of tomorrow. You know, so you know, we are going to, to make sure that we get back to the formula that got us here in, in the first place and that I believe so strongly in. And it's not like we had gone far off that, that model or that formula, um, but we, we cracked the door open. And when you do that, you know, um, you start to kind of um, hear more of it than you should. Frank Woodany, your daily record. Hey, thanks for your time today, James. Hey, Frank. Hi. Um, as far as penalties go, you guys are one of the least penalized teams in the country before Ohio State. Those numbers double the last two weeks. How surprising is that? What do you do to make sure that that then doesn't become a trend going forward here at the end? Yeah, I, I'm pretty comfortable with that. You know, I, I don't, I don't think it is a trend. We've been that way all year long, as you guys know. I, I turn penalties into the officials each week, and um, I, I don't, I don't feel like it's a trend, and I don't, I don't see like, I don't see that's a trend. I, I think you know that there is a part of it 
um, when you play high-level competition and you're playing high-level athletes, you see a little bit more of that. But um, I, I, I don't see that being a trend for us. Uh, I, I really don't. You know, and, and again, we study all those things, and I turn those things in and, and have discussions and study the tape and talk to you know some guys that we have on our campus as well about rules interpretation. We have officials <coughs> practice every single day, but. You know, I, I look at the whole thing and the whole season, and, and we've been one of the better teams in the country in, in penalties, and we've had two games where it's spiked up for whatever reason. Um, but, you know, we'll continue to study it and, and make sure that doesn't become an issue. Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Hi, Jay. Hey, Joe. Um, we talked this season about uh, getting Saquon the ball more in space. Um, but have you seen that being done enough? What has the uh, defense done to... Uh, prevent it from happening more, and do you feel like you're having to keep in Saquon more to pass protect because of the pressure on the quarterback? I think it's probably a combination of all those things. Yeah, we'd, we'd love to get the ball in the Saquon hand, Saquon's hands, uh, but we're not going to force it. You know, we're not going to run them into looks that aren't good looks. And um, you know, if, obviously, if we have some things called, you know, for him to get the ball out of the backfield, uh, and people are covering him, uh, then we're not going to, to force the ball to him. You know, I think I think Saturday was kind of a combination of a lot of factors. Uh, which, which I think you know, you guys are, are are aware of. I mean, to call it a perfect storm of events is probably a great way to describe it. But um, um, you know, I, I think obviously we want to get the ball in the Saquon's hands as, as much as we possibly can, but we won't force it. And once again, if if people are, are spending so much time doing everything they can to stop Saquon from getting the ball, it creates other opportunities. I think I think Trace threw for about 400 yards uh, last week, um, and that, that's what's going to happen. When you, when you overcompensate to stop one thing, it creates opportunities in other areas. And for us, the, the, the big issue is, is the turnovers. Um, you know, this isn't about creating stats for one person. This is about finding the best ways to win. And, um, you know, this is a chess game, and the defense is going to try to do things to take things away from you, and, and you, need to, you need to be able to take advantage of the opportunities that that, that scheme or that style presents. Mike Gers, Lancaster Newspapers. Good afternoon, James. How are you? Good, Mike. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I wanted to ask about something you said after the game on Saturday. I can say you said you don't believe in goal setting, and I, I, I think I know what you kind of what you mean by that. But could you? Some people might find that surprising that a football coach doesn't believe in goal setting. Could you expand a little bit on that? What your how you sort of arrived at that uh, idea? But you know, maybe I haven't come out and said it said it that direct way. But I, you know, for really for my seven years as a head coach, uh, every speech I've given, um, you know, talking to the team, um, you know, clinics, things like that. that that's something that I've, I've always believed in. I think goal setting is a, is a powerful and useful tool for 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 some people. Um, but you know, it's not something that I've ever used uh, from a leadership position. For us, it's about our formula of how we do things, um, not necessarily setting a goal. I think you know, what I learned early on as a head coach is you set a goal that you know, some people may seem as a fairly aggressive goal, um, and then you, you reach that goal. It's human nature to take a deep breath and feel like you've arrived. Um, and, and now you can reset another goal, but I, I don't think it has the same type of effect. And then I'd also make that argument if you set a goal um, and that goal is no longer attainable anymore, then that, that has an impact as well. So you know, for us, I'm just a big believer that you wake up every single morning, you maximize the day, um, you prepare the best you possibly can, you train, um, you, you do all the things necessary to put your, put your program or your organization or your team in the best position to be successful. Um, so you focus on the formula, not necessarily uh, on goals and things like that, because I think goals in a lot of ways can limit you uh, at certain times. Donnie Collins, Grand Times Tribune. Hi, Jerry Dave. Hey, Donnie, how are you? Doing well. Um, not the pass rush not getting to the quarterback the last few weeks, whether he's had four, five, or six. Is, is there a reason that you've seen that on film? Is how much of the quality of the competition playing to that? Or is, and is there something you could change, maybe different blitz packages, some other adjustments to, to kind of help that along? 
Yeah, I think it's all those things. I think it's 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 losing Torrance Brown. It's losing Ryan Buckholtz factors into that. Um, it's it's the quality of competition. Um, it's some things that we can do to help the guys scheme wise. Um, it's it's continuing to develop young players uh, through fundamentals and techniques. Um, it's it's all those factors. Uh, every single one of them. It's it's not one specific. You know. Uh, Issue is not one specific concern. It's, it's all those. It's all those things. We'll open up to questions here in the room. Raise your hand, and we'll get a mic to you. <coughs> James, how much of a plus is it to be back at home this week? <coughs> Excuse me. And why have you guys been so basically dominant here this season? Um, yeah, it's great to be home. It's great with it being homecoming. It's great with it being military appreciation. Uh, it's great to be in our own surroundings and, and you know, in front of our fans and, and loved ones and things like that. Uh, yeah, that, that's great. That, you know, to me, there's there's things that, that you try to do as a program. And, and number one is you want to create a culture uh, that allows you to build and grow um, over time. I think the other thing that you want to do is, is you want to teach your players how to be successful and, and how to win. Um, and, I, and I think we've done that. And then obviously part of that is, is being able to, um, you know, it, it's funny because it's a lot like you put these two things together. I think, you know, winning at home is something you have to do. Uh, and the same thing we've talked about since day one of recruiting. You've got to be able to win your area. The same way in recruiting, it's the same way on the field. You gotta, you gotta be able to defend your home turf uh, on the football field at Beaver Stadium, and in, in recruiting as well. That that's something that, that I believe in. Uh, and then you need to be able to go, you know, win on the road, um, and you need to be able to go win on the road against elite competition. And it's kind of like phases, uh, and we've worked through uh, a number of those phases, but but we still have have work to do. There is no doubt there is a, a home field advantage if you look across the country um, what people's records are at home compared to on the road you know, there, there is an advantage there's no doubt about it and we have we have a distinct advantage here in Beaver Stadium and we want to continue to use that we're going to need the fans support uh, come Saturday uh, you know for us to, to find a way to be to be successful because it's going to take all of us I, I said that I think in my opening press conference and, and I, I, I believe that even more today it's going to take all of us together to go into that stadium and, and make it a very, very challenging environment uh, for people to be successful. No different than what we deal with when we go on the road. Hey, James, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Hey, Sharif has been forced, for obvious reasons, to play a lot of snaps. How has he handled that? And conversely, how much, how, how difficult does that make it for DN, you know, who's going all out on every play, to be as effective as maybe you would hope he would be? Yeah, I think our model has been at its best when we're able to rotate those guys and keep them fresh, um, you know, fresh as you guys have heard me say in the fourth quarter or fresh late in the season, but also injury prevention. You know, if you're out there playing 65 plays, you got a better chance of, uh, you know, spraining an ankle or, or pulling a muscle or whatever it may be. Um, so that's part of it as well. You know, guys get nicked up. You know, so now you got a guy who's nicked up and also playing. You know, 25 more plays than, than, than probably he should be. Um, all those all those things factor in. There's there's no doubt about it. That's why getting some of these guys back would be would be really helpful for us. Um, and also training these guys to to, to recover and, and, and be durable and and help them. You know, with some of the things that we're doing in terms of some of our other packages and some things that we can do scheme wise as well. John. James, um, you know, how do you think you and your staff over these four years have recruited the state of New Jersey? And I guess how the relationships with those high school coaches grown over the years that you've been here? I think it's I think it's been really good. You know, I think it's I think it's been really good. We've got a lot of respect uh, for state of New Jersey uh, from a from a from a high school play perspective. The level of football it's played, um, how well they're coached, um, how well they're developed. Um, you know, you look at Penn State historically. We've had a number of great players come here and, and have great careers. Um, and great experiences, you know, so uh, it's something that's going to continue to be very, very important for our program uh, moving forward. But I do think I think we're in pretty good shape from a relationship standpoint, and the guys that have come here have been have been successful academically, athletically, socially, the whole package. So uh, you know, we want to continue to do that. 
Hey, James. Um, Steve, you mentioned chess pieces. Uh, Stevens uh, hasn't played as much lately, and when he was in there, he seemed to bring an excitement and air of unpredictability. Are you satisfied with how much you guys have been able to use him uh, these last few games? Yeah, I mean, we have we have plans and we have models and we have things that we discuss game planning, and I think almost every week except for maybe one, uh, we had that package as part of the game plan. And then as the game goes on, Brent Pry is the defensive coordinator, Joe is the offensive coordinator. They, they feel like there's a time and place for for certain calls or certain um, personnel groups or whatever it may be, and uh, depending on how the game is going. You know, they're comfortable calling at that time or not. But Tommy's been great from a preparation standpoint. And, uh, you know, like I said, more times than not, we've had that package. And now it just comes down to, you know, when we're calling it and um, does the situation warrant it and does it make sense. James, you but, you know, for me to, to, to answer, I'm sorry, to answer part of your question that maybe I didn't answer is I want to get as many guys involved in the game as possible. I think, I think that's helpful for everybody. Um, you know, I've talked about that in the past, that, that all our guys have a critical role on our team, but obviously the more guys that you have uh, that can get in the game uh, creates for, for a really healthy locker room. Chief, I remember earlier in the year somebody asked you about Damian Barber and how he was doing after showing up late, but you just said too early to really give a full answer on that. So how has he been doing as far as gaining the swing after showing up after the rest of the class? Yeah, he's doing, he's doing pretty good. You know, he's a big, strong, physical guy. He's about 270 pounds right now. Um, I think he's got you know, a future on the defensive line, whether it's a defensive end or defensive tackle. We'll see just kind of how he continues to grow and, and develop. Um, you know, he's a conscientious kid. I think this has been a huge adjustment for him. Um, you know, obviously you know, losing that time in the summer, um, <clears throat> that's hard because football, if you don't come in the summer, you have to adjust academically, athletically, and socially all at once where a lot of other sports where you know, they don't, they don't start till the spring. It gives them an opportunity to come in and adjust academically and socially first. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, academically and socially first, and then make, you know, the adjustment to an in-season schedule uh, in the spring. So that, that's one of the challenges. That's where I think, you know, the summer school philosophy that the NCA adopted a few years back has, has been really helpful uh, for all sports, but specifically football. Saquon is clearly a great talent but he's been held under 100 yards rushing in six of your nine games. What would you say to the people who think that the onus for that should fall on you guys and what you're not doing as opposed to just simply saying that other teams are loading up to stop Saquon? Well, I think one of the ways that we've been approaching it all year long, um, and I think for a good portion of the year, he's been, he's been leading the country in, in total yards. Um, kickoff return, receiving yards, and, and rushing. And that's kind of how we've approached it all year long, and I think, I think it made sense for us, and, and, and we've been successful that way. Once again, uh, we, can, we can get into to, uh, you know, situations where we're going to hand the ball off just to hand the ball off to Saquon Barkley. That's, that's not who or what um, you know, we want to be offensively. Um, we're, we're a spread RPO offense, and if you decide to, to overload the box based on numbers, we're going to throw. And there's a lot of offenses across the country that do it that way, and, and they're successful. And this formula had worked pretty good for us um, for the last year. Um, you know, we, we've been winning games, and, and we lost the last two, so obviously it's, it's um, easy now um, to critique it. But, but we want to get better at running the ball. We want to get better at protecting the quarterback. But, but we've had one of the more explosive uh, offenses in the country in terms of yards, in terms of points, um, you know, in the last year. You know, so, you know, I get it. Um, you know, Saquon's one of, the, one of the better football players, if not the best football player I've ever been around. Um, he's able to be explosive in, in so many different ways, and that's what we want to do. We want to get the ball into his hands in a lot of different ways. Um, and I think that gives us the best opportunity to be successful. James, <clears throat> good afternoon. Um, you said Saturday night that you thought the team is too finesse, um, kind of at this point. And I know you had said earlier this year that you know offensive linemen are usually kind of the nicest guys, and you wanted them to establish that mean streak. Um, and Matt Langerberg kind of said the same thing when we talked to him. I'm curious as to what point maybe you thought that this team arrived at the the too finesse. And like you said earlier, it doesn't get changed overnight. But what can you kind of do to to work toward this? And seemingly, it's maybe been here a little longer. 
Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's. This is something that's been the last two weeks. I think you know, we we've been this way. Um, when last year we won the Big Ten Championship, and, and this year I think we've been saying uh, internally and externally that we want to be a more physical team up front. And when I say that, I'm not just talking about the offensive line. I'm, I'm talking about tight ends. I'm talking about all of it. Um, I think that's, that's something that we can do a better job of and need to do a better job of to take that next step a, as a program. Um, you know, especially when you get into games like last week where you know the weather you know could make it maybe a little bit more challenging uh, to throw the ball you know the way you want to throw the ball. So um, you know it's 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 this isn't something that that just showed up in the last two weeks. Uh, this is something that we've been talking about about being a more physical unit up front, uh, O line, D line, tight ends, really every position. I think that's that's an area that that we can improve and. Again, you know, these things aren't just you know showing their their ugly heads after the last two games. We've been we've been talking about these these same issues uh, after wins as well. But we've been able to make up for some of those things with explosive plays or leading the country in turnover ratio. You know, we've been doing a lot of good things. And you know, again, there's there's uh, you know, the best programs in the country have areas of 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 need or areas that they need to improve, and, and we're no different than them. Uh, James, well, where does Rutgers fit in on your list of rivals? And would you expect the rivalry to become maybe a little more intense as they become more competitive? Yeah, that, that's not how we approach things. Yeah. Hey, James, um, how are you? Good. Are you? Good. You look at Rutgers, at least on paper, they lead the Big Ten in like sacks against. Um, you know, what do you see from them offensively that kind of you know, allows them to keep that number low? Well, I think you know, that's the style of offense that they run. You know, they're gonna they're gonna run the ball. Um, you know, they're gonna play action pass. Um, they're gonna throw quick game. You know, I think you know I lived that world for for a number of years as an offensive coordinator when you know you're calling the game to try to help manage you know some of those situations. And Jerry's a very experienced coach and has, has done a good job of that. Um, they do have a big big physical offensive line. They're big at the running back position. You look at two of their best players are Miami transfers on, the, on their team. They're running back 235 pounds, and, and he'll pound you. Um, you know they're doing they're doing a nice job. They're doing a nice job of, of protecting the quarterback, max protect, play action pass, quick game, move the pocket, things like that. Um, but I think that I think that's kind of a big part of how they are preparing and how they're planning each week is is how do we how do we protect our quarterback and not have the sacks and um, you know in some in some situations uh, live to punt you know that's that's you know we all do that in some situations where you say hey you know we may run the ball now third and long or, or we may throw a, a quick game on third and long to help our offensive line out you may break a tackle and pick up the first down but worst case scenario you put your punter on the field and you kick them deep and you allow your defense to go out and play so I, you know, I think it's a combination of all those types of things. I think they're managing that situation well. Way in the back, James. Like, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. I was looking at both the, um, the AP and the coaches' polls. In the AP, I think there are five two-loss teams ranked ahead of you guys. And in the coaches, I think it's something like two or three. Um, you know, two weeks ago, you are the number two team in the country, and you lose to two nationally ranked teams by only four points. What do you think should be prioritized the most when doing the rankings, especially when you're trying to delineate between teams with the same amount of losses? And then how do you take that into consideration when you're trying to schedule your games going into any year? Yeah, to be honest with you, um, I get it. And I know this is something that, that media and fans talk about all the time. Um, I'm definitely not talking about it, you know, especially this week. Uh, we're focused on Rutgers, and if we beat Rutgers, everything else will take care of itself. Um, you know, from a scheduling perspective, all those things are looked at. Um, you know, me and Sandy sit down, and Phil Eston, we also kind of sit down and kind of talk about all these different philosophies. They're, they're, you know, the problem is there's no true model, because you may schedule someone right now, and they're a completely different program by the time you play them. You know, so... Um, you know, you know I, I, we're focused on, on playing Rutgers. 
not on the rankings, not on, on anything else. I mean, you look at preseason rankings, you look at middle of the season rankings, you look at the end of the season rankings, they, they, they don't make a whole lot of sense. They're all over the map. So for us, we're just focused on Rutgers, and we're focused on Penn State, and developing our players, and loving our players, and coaching our players, and teaching our players, and having our players teach us, and, and get better. And, um, you know, I think the more times you know, we keep our focus like that, um, we'll have a program that we can all be really proud of and excited about and, and uh, have a chance to be successful on Saturdays. All, all that other stuff, um, I haven't talked to anybody yet that's figured it out. I haven't seen anybody be able to predict how the season's going to finish or how things are going to go, so I'm just going to focus on the things that we can control, which is the development of our players and, um, you know, and the development of the relationships in our locker room. That's that's our that's our focus. The only thing I will tell you is Ricky Ronnie told me uh, last week um, that Sports Illustrated predicted the last two uh, World Series baseball champions and the MVP, which is awesome. I haven't seen anybody do it for football. Hey James, over here. How are you doing? Today? Good. How are you? Good. Um, you've mentioned not getting home with four and then having to blitz and then that also not being as effective as you would hope. What have you seen from your players when you blitz as far as the execution and the timing when, when they do attack the line? Yeah, you know, I think it's, I think it's, I think we could play a little bit more aggressive. I think we could play a little bit more reckless. Um, I think, I think sometimes we go to blitz and we see the, the offense fan out to, to pick up the blitz and, and, and we don't attack it as hard as, as we should attack. And I still think, I think there's some things that we can do uh, scheme-wise. I think there's some things that we can do fundamental-wise and technique-wise. I think it's, it's, it's all those things. I think it's getting you know, some of our injured players back. Um, I think it's, it's, it's all of it. It's, it's not one specific issue or one specific reason. If it was, that would be an easy solution. We would attack that. Um, but, it, but it's a combination of all those things. And, and again, you know, over the last year, we've, we've done those things fairly well. When I say last year, I'm talking, you know, basically three quarters of last season. Um, and then, you know, the, the first half of this season, pretty darn good. So our, our, our players haven't forgotten how to play, and our coaches haven't forgotten how to coach. Um, we've played two really good opponents, and we've lost by a total of four points. And uh, we got to find a way to, to come out on top of those situations more often uh, than, than we are right now. And again, that's that's also saying you know um, that we've been we've been pretty successful overall, but but not as successful as we want to be, or not successful as successful that that, that our fans want us to be. But uh, I can guarantee there's nobody that's working harder at it than the guys in our locker room and the coaches in our offices uh, to solve some of these challenges and issues that we identify just like, like you guys do. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thank you. We'll have DeAndre Tompkins momentarily.